Praise the Lord. I want to thank you for joining me today. And I'd like you to join in with me and sing a song. Amen. Thank you all for joining in this morning for our Sunday School lesson. And today we're going to be talking about part two of the 16 Fundamental Truths of the Assemblies of God. Before we go into the, our second half, we're going to review the first, the first eight Fundamental Truths. The first fundamental is scripture inspired. And what that says is that the Holy Bible was written by men with the help of the Holy Spirit. It was God breathed and therefore inerrant. The second is the one true God. Creation declares God's glory. And he said, there is no other God beside him. He's self-existent. He's the great I am. And number three, 
the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. So God is expressed in three persons, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then fourth, the fall of man. Fifth, the salvation of man. Sixth, the ordinances of the church. Seven, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Eight, the initial evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that's the first half of the fundamental truths. But today we are starting on part number two. And that's eight through 16. So fundamental truth number nine is sanctification. Number 10 is the church and its mission. Number 11 is the ministry. Number 12, divine healing. Number 13, the blessed hope. Number 14, the millennial reign of Christ. Number 15, the final judgment. And finally, fundamental truth number 16 is the new heavens and the new earth. So the first one we're going to talk about today is sanctification. So what sanctification is, it's a period after salvation where the Holy Spirit helps the believer to be transformed by the renewing of their mind. I remember when I first got saved. It was a wonderful change that came over my life. And God put a new joy in my life. And that joy came from me coming into a relationship with my Heavenly Father. And just to know that God loves me, put a smile on my face. You know how the scripture says in 1 John, Behold what manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us, that we should be called the children of God. And that's what made this topic of sanctification so special. It's because when you are born again, you're born into the family of God. And as his dear children, the Heavenly Father is going to be your, your father in life. Just like it says in the Psalms, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. So that means that when you become a child of God, God is going to look after you. Amen? He's going to begin to teach you through his Holy Spirit. And so, after you're born again, you are born of the Spirit of God. And so, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, one of his first works in your life is the work of sanctification. And that's one of the things that's so beautiful about salvation. The Bible says that God is going to beautify the meek with salvation. And so he's going to beautify your life, amen, with not just with religion, but with 
spiritual maturity. And so the work of the Holy Spirit in our life after we're saved is that he's going to, during that honeymoon period of your salvation, he's going to train you and teach you how to live in God's kingdom. Amen. It's a wonderful thing to be in God's kingdom. In God's kingdom, there's righteousness and peace and joy of the Holy Spirit. There's so much love in God's kingdom, so much joy. But God is not just talk. God loves you indeed. He whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And so part of that freedom is God allows the Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit, to, to help you become set apart from the world. From set apart from that old nature that you had. You take off the old garments and you put on the new. And so, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 says, the Holy Ghost help us to obey God's command. It says, be ye holy for I am holy. Being holy means that you submit yourself to God's laws and to his commandments. And you do God's will instead of your own. Amen? But one good thing about it is when you are born of the Spirit of God, you're a new, regenerated spirit. Amen. It always wants to do God's will and what pleases God. The problem is, in life, when you're a spiritual person, there's a war going on. That war is between your regenerated spirit, which wants to do God's will, and you have two enemies, the devil or Satan, and your own fallen nature, your flesh. So your spirit wants to do God's will, but your flesh wants to do its own thing, which leads to sin. Or you may be influenced by dark forces. So we have to consider ourselves indeed dead to sin. So in order to allow the Holy Spirit to do his work in your life, we have to realize that when we were saved, that our old sinner man has died. And that we're living our life unto God now. And so we yield ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit, which wants to perfect you. And that sanctification is not just a one-time thing. We have the pleasure of all our lives to live with the Holy Spirit working in our life. Jesus said that when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, that he will lead you into all truth. And so that means that in every area of your life, the Holy Spirit is going to work with you to do God's will and to fulfill your destiny in life. So praise God and thank God for the sanctifying power of God's Holy Spirit. 
And number 10, the church and its mission. The church is the body of Christ. So all believers together is what make up the church with a divine appointment for the fulfillment of her great commission. You see, after Jesus rose from the dead, he told the, his disciples to go into all the world and to preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And he said, Lo, I am with you even until the end of the world. So we should thank God that we are part of God's family and therefore we're part of the body of Christ, his church. And we have all have a part to play in God's mission. Each believer is born of the Spirit and is an integral part of the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which is written in heaven. You should be so grateful because Jesus said, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 to 23 says that Jesus is the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the good thing about being a part of the church and its mission is that God placed the church here for us so that our needs can be met. And also, we can be a part of helping others meet their needs as well. So it's not a good thing for you to think that you could be a Christian and not be a part of the body of Christ, a part of the church. Amen? Because you have so many brothers and sisters in Christ that you need them and they need you. And so if you want to fulfill your destiny, if you want to fulfill your calling in life, you need to be a part of the church. Amen? And that's how Jesus himself is going to meet your needs. He's going to make sure you grow up into all things. The church is to be an agency of God's evangelism to the world, to be a corporate body for worship, and also to be a channel of God's purpose to build a body of saints perfected in the image of his son. Amen. I remember that story about how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And Lazarus came hopping out of the grave, but he still had all his grave clothes on. And Jesus told those that were standing by, he, they, he said, loose him and let him go. So he wanted them to take those grave clothes off of Lazarus after he was resurrected. And that's why we need to be a part of the church. Amen? Because God is going to use other people to help you get free. Jesus said, and they shall know the truth, and the truth shall make them free. If the Son therefore has set you free, you shall be free indeed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these 16 fundamental truths. 
And Lord, we ask you that you would help us, Lord, during our lifetime, that you would help us to walk out these truths and make them a part of our lives, that we might fulfill your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my friend.